but we look forward to be working with uh, President Trump for the next five years. So uh, I think that would be really good for, for us. You're going to say longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them a little bit longer. They'll love that. That'll be breaking news. <laughs> I'm only going to be for five years. <laughs> you would need to talk with, to vote with the next president. Yes. So, uh, so we're uh, we're very happy to be here, and we're hoping that this this meeting is to, will only strengthen our relationship even more. And I think it will because you know we're President Trump is very nice and cool, and I'm nice and cool too. <laughs> we all we both use Twitter a lot, so you know, you know we'll get along. And we're very honored. We're very honored. Well, it's our honor. Thank it's you very pleasure. much. And we're working together very well. Okay, so we just had CPAC, a big Republican event, and the president of El Salvador was there, and this man stole the show. This man brought down the house with his speech. He gave a great speech. But we're gonna get into his statements in a second. But first I wanna talk a little bit about his presidency, what he's been doing over the last couple of years. And the main thing that he's gained worldwide notoriety for is his war against a gang. So El Salvador has a terrible reputation in the last few decades. We know MS-13 rooted from El Salvadorian gang members, even though it started in California with El Salvadorians in California, but it made its way down quickly to El Salvador. And next thing you know, the country was completely overrun with gangs, mainly MS-13, the government can control them. In fact, some of the government officials were involved being paid off or members of these gangs. So it's been corrupt as hell. These people were soft. The leftist type leadership in El Salvador, they couldn't handle it. They didn't know what to do. And of course, a lot of them were taking the money, but this man came in a couple of years ago and he said, I don't give a damn about what y'all say. I'm about to get rid of these fools. I'm about to do whatever I need to do and y'all can cry all you want. I'm about to do whatever I need to do to get rid of these fools. There were tens of thousands of gang members in El Salvador. And it's not even a large country. I'm not sure the population in total. But El Salvador is not a large country. And tens of thousands of these people were active gang members. Mainly MS-13. But this guy built the largest prison in the Western Hemisphere and built up his military and took the leash off of them. <laughs> he arrested 6,000 of them in 10 days. Let's take a look at this clip. A frightening image inside a prison in El Salvador and President Nayib Bukele wants the world to see. He says it shows gang members punished and kept in crowded cells away from any sunlight since the end of March. Bukele says the food is now being rationed to two meals per day for gang members now facing harsher sentences. For 10 days, the country's national police has been operating with less restrictions. They say they've arrested over 6,000 suspected gang members, tracking them in neighborhoods, inside homes, and even hiding underground. Word got out what he did. Oh, he arrested 6,000 people in under two weeks in the media and the left cried and bitched about it. They cried and moaned, oh, how dare you do this? Because we had images of these guys. They got tattooed. You know how the guys look, shave heads, tattoos all over their bodies, gang signs on their bodies. So he had these guys chained up, looking like slaves, basically, because they were sitting there on the ground, shoulder to shoulder, handcuffed, couldn't move, crowded, and he just took thousands of them, just packed them in like that. And People on the left in the United States were saying, oh, this is so terrible. This is inhumane. Don't these people have rights? You can't do this. We're talking about animals. We are talking about vicious criminals. These guys are terrorists creating ruckus in their country, basically destroying the country, creating all types of terror, children, doing completely despicable things. And he rounded them fools up and locked them up like animals. And people were saying, oh, you can't do this. This is so terrible. Oh, Get these people some rights, man. Treat them better. Treat them more humanely. And he said, all right, I'll tell you what. How about I arrest another 50,000 of them? <laughs> Let's take a look. Tonight, mass arrests in El Salvador continue. The country's president, Nayib Bukele, doubling down on what he has called a war on gangs. The government announcing that at least 50,000 people have been arrested since late March. 
a rest that they have then touted across social media for months, using the hashtag war against gangs, and taking to Twitter yet again, this time to say the exception has made it possible to intensify the war against gangs and get thousands of terrorists off the street. We don't have death penalty, so we have to arrest all the m****s. So you say, why, why is such a big number? Well, what do you expect? That we arrest 100 people and we leave 6, 69,900 gang members in the streets and suddenly the, the murder rate will drop? Or do you expect that we, because we're Salvadorans or something, because we're second class citizens or something, we have to die? They have to families, they have to children, they have to, because your uh, liberal ideas of what a democracy should be have to be respected. And we, since we're not using your recipe, then we have to be we have to let our children be We have to let the bloodshed to go on for 50 years because of imported policies from your countries. So you listen to this guy. He said, look, I'm not going to round up a couple of hundred of them. I'm not going to round up a handful of them. There are tens of thousands of them, and I'm going to do my best to grab every single one of them. Some of them were juveniles, and that was one of the problems before, before his time. People were saying, well, they're juveniles. You can't arrest children. You can't do this to children. And he said, look, man, we ain't got time for that. We have some of the most vile, corrupt people in the world right here in our country creating a terrorist-style atmosphere where people can't even live. People can't feel safe. And millions of the El Salvadorians have fled the country. So he said, cry all you want. If you think I'm so inhumane, you think I need to treat them better, how about this? How about I send them to your neighborhoods, leftists? If you want to be one of these left-wing, rich Democrats in the United States, talking crap, talking about, oh, he's so bad, he's treating them terribly, this is not right. How about we send them to your neighborhood? And, of course, they had nothing to say after that because they know that they can sit, these people on the left, they can sit comfortably in their house, wherever they are, their gated communities, their apartment buildings, thousands of miles away. They can sit comfortably and trash talk, talking about you can't treat them like this. But they know they wouldn't want these people in their neighborhoods. <laughs> so their whole argument was nonsensical to begin with. He's giving them two meals a day, got them packed. You saw that jail cell, got them packed in there. And the jail cells in the United States, you know, they get cable TV, they get basketball, they get ways they get room they got room to walk around do push-up you know, like look i don't care about all that feed them just enough to live because we don't have the death penalty so just give them enough food to survive no luxury meals no extra i don't want them feeling full and look i don't care about them exercises and being entertained just throw them in there lock them up like animals and that's what he did there's a speech he gave probably about a year ago where he went at lent actually he talked about nazism in germany so what happened, people don't talk about this a lot, but what happened in Germany after Hitler? Because before Hitler died, you had a decades-long period of Nazism. So what happened in Germany to get Germany to the point where it is today? So he made an analogy to MS-13 comparing it to Nazism, saying that, well, what Germany had to do was completely outlaw everything. You couldn't do the hand gestures, you remember all the hell, Hitler, Nazism, the swastika any images you couldn't go out and say the word you couldn't talk about it you couldn't do the hand gestures you couldn't write about it you couldn't dress up the way they dress the nazis who died they were buried in the cemetery you couldn't go put flowers on their graves germany had to completely ban it because it was something rooted in the culture in the spirit of the country so you can't just take a few Nazis and drop them off and then say, okay, these guys, they're in the grave now, so it's over. No, you have to gut it and root it out of the spirit, out of the heart of the culture of your country. And it took Germany decades to do that. And he said with MS-13, if we got fallen gang members, no, you can't go over there to that grave. You can't honor them. You can't have gang signs. You can't have a tattoo. We don't need you talking about it. You can't do anything related to this. We need to completely anything related to ms-13 in this country outlaw it and over time it will be uprooted from the culture of the country because it is stuck it is in the heart of the country it is a toxic spiritual infection in the heart of el salvador and he knows that he knows it's a long fight he knows it has to continue after his time so he's doing what he can right now to strongly initiate the process but 
let's get back to CPAC. Like I said, this man, he brought the house down, man. He gave a great speech. So we're going to look at a couple of excerpts, listen to a little bit of what he said about globalism. Let's take a look. Globalism comes to die at CPAC. I'm here to tell you that in El Salvador, it's already dead. But if you want globalism to die here too, you must be willing to unapologetically fight against everything and everyone that stands for it. These dark forces are already taking over your country. You may not see it yet, but it's already happening. You don't see it as clearly because people are designed to see linear changes, not exponential ones. We don't always recognize how fast a problem can multiply and spiral out of control. The problem is much like the metaphor of the boiling frog. Once the water boils, it's already too late. People fail to see these things. It's our nature. Just like the frog, people become complacent and they don't realize how bad things are getting until it's too late. I think he made some really good points there because we don't notice how corrupt forces are changing our culture, changing our ways of life. And the reason why we don't notice that there's going to be a drastic change is because it's happening piece by piece, slowly and subtly. We don't notice these changes, but we'll look back like, what the hell happened to our country? So if we look at United States right now, we got criminals getting away with all types of stuff because of cell phone crime policies. We have teachers and pedos going at the children at schools. We have free speech slowly turning into censored speech in the United States. The democratic process of election is turning into some type of corrupt banana Republican style elections. The rich people are getting richer. Politicians. These politicians are more brazenly, more openly stealing money from the people, making themselves richer through all types of corrupt policies like the COVID-19 shutdown how they use big former to enrich themselves, how Pfizer and Moderna made billions and billions of dollars, and the politicians were getting kickbacks, their mentions are bigger than ever, forever wars with the military industrial complex, how Lockheed, Raytheon, Boeing, all these military contractors, they're getting extremely rich, they're bribing officers at the Pentagon, they're bribing politicians, they got lobbyists in DC giving kickbacks, so they're stealing the people's money to wage forever wars, while they are getting rich more openly, more brazenly, stealing. COVID-19 shuts down, all these small businesses gone, but these big corporations, Walmart was open the whole time because they got big lobbying power. They're going to pay the politicians off in D.C. So they can keep getting money. All that money going to mom and pop is now going to the big corporations and the corporations are giving it to the politicians. They're more openly, more brazenly still. And this stuff happens subtly over time. All of these things infect the spirit of the country and over time people will look back like damn this is a completely different country that's why i say the founding fathers they will be rolling over their grave if they look at the condition it's like this is not the country this is not what we visualize this is not the country we had in mind this is some corrupt type country where the leadership needs to be done away with because it's completely corrupt we need something more clean and more for the people the people have the right to a government that works for them, a government for the people and by the people, not a government where politicians enrich themselves, where they corrupt the spirit of the country, where they let criminals roam free, where they let all types of people, we don't know who the hell they are, into the country, and where they try to censor speech, where they arrest pastors for having church service, but keep strip clubs and liquor stores and marijuana dispensaries open. So... I like his point. He gave us a warning to be very wary of this globalism, how these people, the powers that be are corrupt in the country because they're well at work right now in the United States. We're going to look back in 20 years. We're going to compare it like, man, look, the year 2040 compared to year 2000, it's a completely different country. Overall, great speech. I think he's doing a great job in El Salvador. And like I said, he brought down the house with his great speech. So let me know what you guys think. Leave me your thoughts below. Share the video. Thanks for watching.